a man that has resources at his disposal is a deadly man. If God is not his king, imagine how much money he has to play around with women. I was going with my colleague for work. We entered an office. The lady that was casting news on television, he told me, ah, that's, that's his former girlfriend. Meanwhile, we came into the office randomly. It's not as if we did not choose the time to come. We just came, but the, his, his girlfriend was, was up. We entered one office. Hey, he hugged one girl there because he ah, said, okay, this one. When, this, I, I know this one. By the time we finished from that office, he had hooked up. He had reconnected with five ladies that he had known before. Why was it so he had the resources to do? If God wants to give you resources, what he does is that he puts you under commandment. That's the only way you can manage a strong man. Oh, most of you don't know how powerful the resource of anointing is. It's more powerful than money. If you are not under commandment, that resources, the resources at your disposal, will, 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 you will injure so many destinies. So when God wants to help a man that he wants to commit something to, he puts him under commandment. Before God puts authority on your tongue, He will take you through training such that you cannot cause anybody. If you find people that cause people on the streets in the market, there's nothing on their tongue. They are just wasting. The real people that have the power that can destroy. Before He gives you, He puts you under government. When you see a man operating as if he's master, he absconded from class. Because the idea of man is a creature that represents God. So you cannot be master. No. The arrangement for man doesn't accommodate the place of mastery. Are you there? Do you know I started having international invitations 2012. I had the few invitations. And I went to Jesus. I said, Jesus, I didn't even ask him, are you the one that opened the door? I said, Jesus, thank you for opening the doors. And then he now told me, I'm not responsible for any of those doors. So that was how, how I did not honor those invitations. I, start, I was on satellite in 2011, satellite television, 2011. I started having invitations, 2012, 13. When they knew that I wasn't coming, the things started dropping. Then one of those years, I don't, I've forgotten the year, I got one invitation. When I saw it, I laughed because of the nation. So, <laughs> Then Jesus came again and said, I'm sending you there. <laughs> That's the place. I'm sending you there. Sending you there. That was the first time in my life I saw cripples rise in an open meeting. Five, five of them began to walk. In fact, when, I, when I, I, I greeted them, I was greeting them on the pulpit, they just brought one boy with twisted legs and kept him here so that if I claim that I didn't, I won't claim that I didn't see him. So when they dropped the body, my preaching, my pulpit became here. We were, I was no longer visiting the, the sun. Do you know that when I was preaching, the guy began to shake like this on the ground. There. So I went there to investigate what was, what was going on. He was shaking. Then after a while, I noticed the boy stood up. He stood up like this, but he couldn't walk. So and the normal thing to do was to command him to walk. But they, they, there was no courage to accomplish it. Please understand that that's the first time. That's the first time. No courage at all. Because I was wondering, I said, okay, what if I talk now? What if he now falls down? That... <laughs> it was my interpreter that now came to me. I, I, was, I was observing the ball. My interpreter now came from the back. And he probably wanted to tell me that. Can you see the miracle? So he touched me. It was when he touched me at the back that walk now came out of me. That walk, I assure you, was not my doing at all. <laughs> this boy began to walk. <laughs> I'm telling you now, I know nothing about the boy's walk. The mother now began to cry. When other people that were crippled saw him, they threw their crutches away and started walking. So the people were now saying, I was a big preacher from Nigeria. In fact, they had to, rest, to whisk me away from the pulpit that night to avoid stampede. I went to my room and said, what is happening? You know what, what is happening? The Lord sent me. That's what is happening. When the Lord sends you, even though you are not a powerful man, 
you will now accomplish powerful things. People that gave their life to Christ, I took them to the, the river for baptism. So they sang a song in their language and it was so sweet. Even though I, I couldn't hear what they were saying, but it was sweet in the spirit. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, Bethesda, Bethesda. Then I remembered that place in scripture in the book of John chapter 5. Where an angel came and stirred the water. And anyone that entered first was he. Ah, I entered inside the water. I, I'm the angel now. You know, after what happened, faith, the faith has, has gone off. <laughs> I entered inside the water and I said, People that are sick. Do you know? This is life. This is real. We started that baptism 12 noon. We finished by 4 p.m. People that were sick were getting here, just entering that water. I said, what's happening? There's an unbeliever. He's, he's an academic, so he doesn't believe all this miracle. When I landed from the plane, we came to his house. He came with a medical report and uh, an x-ray that some muscles here, were, they were torn. I saw it in the x-ray. I laid my hands there, prayed for him. Then we went for the crusade for seven days. By the time we got back, because he wanted to prove that I was a fake preacher, he went back for another x-ray. And discovered that he couldn't see the torn muscles there again. So he kept it and waited for me. When we came back from the field, we branched at his house. He went inside and brought it. He said, Now he believes the God that we came to preach. <laughs> My driver now told me that his in law's house is close to this place. Can he just pass there? Let me bless them. I said, Why not? We go to the in-law's house. His father-in-law, deaf in one ear since when he was nine, and then the other ear could only hear slightly. So when I greeted him, he did not hear. He said, no, it's not as if he's not a good man, he can't hear. I just, I put my hand in his ear. I said, Jesus can open this ear. Before I prayed, the man started hearing. The, the ear that was deaf could hear better than the real one. The man now began to dance without music. I noticed his wife was sitting down. She was excited, but she was sitting down. I was expecting her to stand. She had a stroke. Prayed for her. The woman stood up and began to. You know, at this time, the faith, the faith was. <laughs> she began to work. Their first son came from that door and said in his heart, hey, this false prophet said, okay. As he said that, I heard it as if a human being spoke to me. I, I went to him and said, Am I the one you're calling a first prophet? He was so amazed that he, he fell down. So that's how I left them on my way to the airport. When we got to the airport, I noticed the driver was crying. So the military people that were supposed to, the security people now, they arrested me. That I made their citizens. He now came and explained to them. The, Air Force, the, the military people needed prayer. Now that was my first mission outside of my country. Me too. I, I was crying. But God commanded me to go. If I take you to the book of Acts of the Apostles, I will show you how that Jesus gave his apostles commandments. When God chooses you, one of the ways we know is that he will give you commandments. The commandments are supposed to restrain you so that you can manage the powers he makes available to you. Our generation is sick. They need men that can help. And then you carry the power of Jesus. Like a man I met in Vienna. He had long beard like this. He was as tall as this. Yes, like this. With broad chest. You would think he came to fight. But as I was preaching, he began to cry. He wept throughout. The next day I came preach, he was crying. The third day I came. I now called him and said, why are you crying? He started telling me all the sins he's committed. I didn't preach about salvation. I was just preaching. Just teaching. Prayed for him. Pleaded with Jesus on his behalf. And Jesus gave him great, the peace of the forgiveness of sins. That guy became an evangelist. The world needs men 
that can bring the abilities of God. And before God makes you powerful, he will bridle you with his commandments so that the anointing he gives you will not become the reason why you will derail. You know, Apostle Paul said, I beat my body. I put it in subjection so that when I preach to others, I myself will be restrained enough not to become a casting. So if God likes you, what he does to you is that he bridles you with, with commandments. That's the second experience he gives one. I will end with a story. There was this preacher. He spends his weekends on the mountain. So he takes care of the family, puts everybody in order, then he'll climb with his lamb on Friday dry fasting. He will come back Sunday 5 a.m. to take his bath and put on his suit. He became so powerful in the area of raising the dead. He, he, he was a, an authority in raising the dead. He maintained that discipline for a long time. He became very powerful. Let him not speak because if he, if he does, it will happen. If he releases a curse on you, it will, it will, it will rest. He had authority. He could summon spirits that had departed from bodies back from Hades. At the time of this story, the person that told me this story, he went to pray for him because he was on a wheelchair. How did he get to a, to a wheelchair? He started sleeping with people's wives. So the gate of death was open. If you are not schooled on how to use the power of choice. He will come into head-on collision with it. He made choices. Those choices overwhelmed his defenses in the spirit. Those choices made him a target and made him accessible. Those choices made him vulnerable to stroke. And the reason why it was stroke was even messy. So that he will have time to repent. I hope you know Satan will not wish stroke for him. Like some of you that got, you were involved in an accident and you came out, like me. How many of you have? Aha. Do you realize that it was not the vehicle Satan was uh, attacking? It wasn't stroke that Satan planned, but it was stroke that came on him so that he would have time to repent. The preacher that went to minister to him was the one telling me this story. He prayed for him. He even stood up and began to walk from the wheelchair. But as the preacher was leaving, God told him, Yes, I answered your prayer, so you, you know I'm with you. But that man, he has died. Three days later. And that death was not by ordination. That death was by the choices. Every man must be trained to handle choice. And if you have not gotten these three lessons that God gave Adam, it means you have sconded from class. And when we look around the body of Christ today, it is obvious many have absconded. So the demand for the deliverance ministry is on is on is <laughs> we need to be casting death away every Sunday. Because some people would have made choices that would have brought death close to their corridor. God wants to raise a generation that will serve his will so that his glory can be restored to the nations. That's why he kept us. And indeed, we will serve you. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Now, we will just pray along these lines, but my real prayer point is on the area of choice. 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 I used to know a great prophet in Ghana. I don't want to call his name, but some of you will know him. Great prophet. And I was making plans to come and invite this prophet to Nigeria. But I had to stop when I was given a number of prophets. So I was trying to come close to this particular one because of his history. Hallelujah. Every true prophet should have a larger appetite for intercession. That's how we know that it's indeed your prophet. Your appetite for intercession, your capacity for intercession should be more than ordinary. The revelatory ministry has its foundation in the priestly office. If the revelations are going to come from God, it must be triggered by prayer power. So I saw this one. 
As you grow up and you become more spiritual, you discover that that life is very lonely. Because the Holy Ghost will be calling you into his chamber again and again, and your wife too needs to be growing with you. If not, she will not understand the demands that will come upon you in the days of your strength. Hallelujah. Because as she's growing in the spirit, she will understand. And when you are there with God, she will be laboring that. Let that man hear well. Are you with me? Well, there was an update about this preacher. And the update was contrary to the previous update. When you see sharp changes in the lives of men like that, contrary to the history they have kept over the years, it is choice. They must have seen the corruption in the body of Christ. And the people that are corrupted, Jesus did not kill them. They are riding good cars. They are prominent. People in government are reaching out to them for counsel. They will see, you see them snapping with the president here, vice president here, minister of finance there, and they are laughing. It means they have been exchanged. <laughs> so, ah, choice. Choice. It opens the gates of death. And I told you, death is a process, it's not an event. Right? So you see, high profit, it begins to diminish. Death has set the idea of God is at the part of the church to be as a shining light that shines more and what more and more onto the back. Perfect day like Reinhard Bonke. He kept growing in authority until he existed. He existed this world. That's how his part is. We we'll know that the throne he occupies in the spirit. He, 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 did not, he did not become vacant before he left. So I couldn't invite that prophet anymore. Because the story had changed. There were current choices that have overwhelmed the previous testimony. See, I was doing very well in the oil industry. I excelled. I mean, why I don't like office work, we all sit before a table. I would die there. Now, so I like field work. So you don't need a table. You go to the field, they take you offshore. You are doing calculations, doing all of that. By the time you are done, you get the report, you push it out. Those reports are the indicators that they will use to make decisions for the industry. I like that kind of job. So I got the kind of job I like. You know when you are doing something and you like it? That's it. You, it's not, in fact, for me it was not a job. I was just doing my hobby. And then Jesus now comes. When I was supposed to become a manager, a big man. You know that table, you know that, table that big table? That when people sit behind it, they, the sound of their voice changes. That's the table. I was en route occupying that table. When Jesus came into my prayers, and reveal that resign now the reason why he has a right to do that is because the salvation i got from him was on the basis of substitution and the implication of that salvation requires that i can no longer live the life i want i will live the life he prescribes that's the implication of substitution the way we know a christian is not somebody that comes to church and is enjoying praise and worship it is illegal for you to continue living your life after you receive salvation through substitution because you that Jesus died for was good for nothing except to be executed. So he took the execution on your behalf so that you become indebted to him. It is what he prescribes that your life should become that it must become. You no longer have a say because according to the ledger of justice, you are dead. It is Christ in you that has the legitimacy to be expressed through your vessel as your life. So substitution, substitution is in twofold. Is it following? The first perspective of substitution in the Bible is the substitute on the cross. I was supposed to be on the cross to be executed for the sin I committed in Adam. So Jesus became my substitute on the cross. So the name of that kind of substitution is called deliverance. So on the cross, I was delivered. Exactly. That's not all. On the cross, I was what? So now, I've escaped the cross because Jesus went there for me. Hmm? But substitution does not allow me to live life the way I would have wanted it. Your flesh would have wanted you to be a sinner. Hopping from one point of sin to another. That is no longer part of the expectation of heaven concerning your life. Are you there? Yes. But God knows 
that you do not have power over sin in yourself. So he had to create the possibility of another level of substitution. So he releases his spirit inside of your heart to become a substitute within. Because your human will, your self-will, your human ability to choose is not strong enough to defeat the pool of sin. The only way you can walk in holiness and live a holy life is through the investment of Christ within your spirit man. As long as you try to engage life from the resources of the flesh that you are used to, you will be confronted with failures. You want to live holy, but you see that you almost fought. You want to live holy, your old girlfriend, when she comes around, your knees will begin to shake. You know that you don't have. So he provides his spirit to become the substitute that we lean on from within. So the Christian life is lived from inside out. And I need to tell you the implication of that. I had to sit down again with my Bible and say, this Christianity, let us find out what it means. I, I discovered a few things that I don't normally hear on the pulpit again. I used to, the preachers that preached in the 18th century, I saw it in their books. 17th century. I saw it in their books. But, and their critical aspects and pillars of our faith. He's a substitute within for our victory. If you move in the flesh, you fail. And that's what the Bible means when it says the righteous man falls seven times. If you are moving in the flesh seven times, <laughs> you have the same experience. That means it's a law. It is constant. The flesh doesn't have the power of victory. When it is faced with a situation that is orchestrated from the realm of the spirit. So there is another level of substitution that is required. A substitute within for my victory. So there's a substitute on the cross for my what? Deliverance. And then there's a substitute within me for my victory. So that any time I encounter a situation that overwhelms me, it means what I need is, I need a substitute within. I need to withdraw and go and find grace from the substitute within. So when an enemy comes against you and he believes that he has defeated you, once you can go in and find that substitute within, you prove to him that he lied. No man can measure your true capacity right now because there is a measure of the Spirit of God upon and the extent to which you rely upon him. That's the degree to which he's strong in your life. Are you there? So, in order for me to round up this my talk because I'm taking too much time already. I wanted to show you what God taught Adam. If I succeed in doing that, I will now show you what Satan taught Adam. At the end of the lecture, we will now find out which of the teachers did you believe because we will see evidences of what you believe in your life. May the Lord give you understanding. <laughs> which of these teachers did you believe? I threw away my old study, jotted, got a new diary. I said, Jesus, can we start again? And I started fresh Bible study. I am not claiming that I, I, I can see now, but I have a little light, much more than I used to have before. But I'm not claiming that I can see. Hey! If God opens your eyes to understand what he's telling us in the Bible, there's no circumstance, no situation that can overpower a man that has the inert support of the Spirit of God. No, no situation. Thank you for watching and if this video has blessed you, please like, kindly subscribe and also tap on the notification bell so you can stay notified and updated on our new videos. And please do not forget to share the link to people so we can bless more people. And most importantly, we want to know how this video has blessed you under the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe.